I love worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. The Bible teaches us that God is a spirit. And whoever worships Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. It's my prayer this morning that you came here in the right frame of mind. Amen. It's my prayer this morning that you came here in the right spirit. Uh, that we might lay aside anything that might be uh, hindering us, might be bothering us, whatever. You are in a place today where there is freedom to worship, where there is freedom to praise, where there is freedom to receive from the Holy Spirit a message. And you know, what I've learned in my walk with the Lord is I can show up in the church and I can hear a, a message from the Bible and, it, and I, can, I can have that message applied to me. And I can leave the church just so excited and so, so revived, really. And then I get to talking to other people who were in the same service that I was in. And the message that they received was totally different from the message that I received. You know what? The Holy Spirit knows each and every one of us. Amen. He knows what our struggles are. He, he, knows, he knows what we need. He knows when we need it. And He knows how we need it. And so if we would come together today and just lay aside, stop worrying about if you turn the coffee pot off. Amen. Stop worrying about if you, if you let the dog out or not. Just, just lay all of that stuff aside Amen. and join together for a few more minutes. And I see some of you snickering right now. Yeah, Pastor Thad's in the pulpit. We, we're here a lot longer than a few more minutes. No, I'm going to I'm going to try this morning to stick with my message. If we could gather together, and, and, and just receive from God all God has for us, then we can go away from here this morning uh, knowing that we have been blessed. Now, I am going to make reference to you from several different <clears throat> places in the Bible today, but um, I'm going to take my main text and my main teaching out of the book of Galatians. So if you have your Bibles, open your, open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter number 5. And once again, after you've heard all the testimonies, and you've heard all the prayer requests, and you've heard all of the songs that we have sang, you've got to know that Christ is the one who is in charge of His church. Amen? And if we learn to follow the Holy Spirit, um, why well, we, we will be blessed for it. Um, before the reading of the Scripture, I would like to just take a moment of time uh, to thank God for our country. I know that our country has an awful lot of problems. I know there's an awful lot of sin. The scripture teaches us that there will be spiritual wickedness in high places in which we are battling against. And so I'm sorry, I didn't break to the young folks to go back. It's okay. I'm just so excited about my message. I'm ready to go. Uh, but I am thankful this morning that we do live in a country where we are free. And I am thankful for every person who has ever stood their ground to make sure that our country is free. And so, if we have any veterans among us today, would you please raise a hand? I know Joe, he's a veteran with us today. We would love to just take a moment to thank you, Joe, and anybody else maybe, maybe who didn't raise your hand. But I would love to take a moment of time to thank you um, for, for all that you've done, amen, and, uh, and for the freedoms that we have as a nation. So, I'm How many of us know that if we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we are set free? Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and that freedom is a freedom that the world knows, uh, knows nothing about. Because the world has not accepted Christ, therefore they don't know of the freedom that comes in Christ. But when Brother Chuck was testifying to the fact that uh, he once was lost and now he's found, we know when we are set free by the Spirit of God, we know that freedom. And it's a freedom that I love. It's a freedom that I never had. I was born in the United States of America. I was born a free person, as the world understands freedom. But I was in bondage. I was enslaved mm -hmm. until the day that I received the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believed it with my heart, and I let it do its work in my life. The Holy Spirit has set me free from so many different bondages in my life. And I don't know if I live to be 50 or 60 years old. I don't know if I live to be 100. But I can tell you, as long as I do live, and as long as the Lord allows me to stay in this life, 
I'll be able to leave here praising the name of Jesus Christ because I have been set free. And so it's that freedom that I want to talk to you about this morning. Read with me if you will the book of Galatians chapter 5, just a few verses of scripture. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Well, I want to stop and go verse for verse, but I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. That's a strong statement, isn't it? If we understand the theology or the teaching behind the circumcision, the circumcision was a mark um, uh, that you were an Israelite and that you believed in God and you were going to follow God. But Paul says here that that Christ shall profit you nothing. I, I want to keep reading here. I don't want to get ahead of myself and I don't want to confuse anyone. For I testify again that every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Because it was written in the law of God for the circumcision to take place. How do I want to say this? The Israelites put their hope and their trust and their faith in being found righteous before God and that they obeyed the law of God. Yeah. Now, I need to be very careful with this teaching today because I don't want to stand guilty of confusing anybody or deceiving anyone. But you know that I believe wholeheartedly in the grace of of God. We are saved by grace through faith that not of yourselves, not of works, not of anything that we can do. We can't boast about how good we've been by keeping a bunch of laws and therefore standing righteous before God. It is through by the blood of Jesus Christ and the grace of God and our faith in that that saves our soul. There are so many people in our world today, and, and I'm going to go as far as saying this, there are so many people in our church world today who trust that they are righteous before God because they do certain things. If we could do certain things to obtain salvation and a righteous standing before God, then Jesus Christ never would have had to have hung on a cross and bleed and die for the sins of mankind. So I want to meticulously today separate works from grace. And I want to hopefully show you that it is by the grace of God that we have attained salvation. And it is by the grace of God that we are going to be able to stay saved. And not of anything that we can do or should do or would do. Albeit, when we are saved, the scripture teaches us in the book of Ephesians, it is by grace that you're saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But it continues to say, for we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So here's the thing. We're not saved because we do good. You can do good to the cows come home. If you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to die lost and go to a devil's hell. We are not saved because we do good things. But because we are saved, we will do good things. It's called being born again. It's called being a new creature in Christ. For I testify to you, every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If you want to put your trust in obeying the commandments of God and following the laws of God in order to die right and go to heaven, then you have the burden on you of fulfilling the whole law of God. And that's why Jesus came. How many of you understand that? I, I think we've got a church world full of people who understand and believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins, but how many people have you ever heard say, why did he have to do that? Why did that happen? There's an answer to that. And the answer to that is we were given the law to show us our depravity. We were given the law to show us how far of a separation there really was between God and man. And when we, when we look at the law of God, we come to understand I don't have the ability to fulfill the law of God. I can hold my tongue from telling a lie. I can, I can keep myself from committing murder. I can, I can do certain things, but I don't have the power to keep myself from fulfilling the whole law of God. I can, I can keep myself from telling a lie, but I'll grant you I'll get overcome with pride because I'm not a liar. 
if, 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 if you're guilty of lying and I'm guilty of pride, we both stand unrighteous before God. It is impossible for man to keep the whole law of God. So that pulls the rug out from the feet of every person that says, I'm following the Ten Commandments, preacher, I'm okay. You can't follow the Ten Commandments. One of the problems that the church has today is we try to make lost people live like they're saved. And you can't do that. I cannot try to make a lost friend or a lost family member live like they're a Christian. The only thing I can hope to do is live like a Christian in front of them in hopes that they will see God in me and want it for themselves. We're too judgmental. We point too many fingers. We say too many times, you should have, or you ought to. Instead, what we need to do is let them see the light of Christ in us and the change that Christ can make in a person's life. And stop trying to lay the law of God upon their shoulders and just introduce them to blood-bought salvation, which is through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. He will make you free. And I'm thankful for that freedom. Praise God. Praise God. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. I knew Pastor Dad was a Baptist, and sooner or later he'd start talking about falling from grace. Well, rather we like that doctrine, or rather we don't like that doctrine, we can see that doctrine found in the verse of Scripture. Now, this is not teaching us that we once were saved and wound up getting lost. This is teaching us that we can deceive ourselves by trying to be good enough to be saved and rejecting the only grace that will ever be offered to you, which is Jesus Christ. If you do that, you have fallen from grace because your trust and your hope is in the law. Is the law of God terrible then? Is it evil? Is it wicked? No. Paul said he was thankful for the law of God because had it not been for the law of God, he would have never seen his need for salvation. And that's my testimony too. Had it not been for the law of God, I would have never seen myself lost. And guess what? I think nobody would ever see it because we all think we're pretty good old Joes, don't we? Amen. <laughs> we all think we got the basics. We all think, oh, we're okay. I, I never intentionally hurt anybody's feelings. I ain't never robbed a bank and I ain't never killed anybody. I, I'm true to my wife and everything. I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm all right. Friend, you've fallen from grace because your trust is not in Christ. Your trust is in you and in your ability. And you don't have the ability to save yourself. Only Christ has the ability to save you. You did run well. Oh, hold on. I'm too far ahead of myself. Verse number five. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Before the law was, there was Abraham. And was not Abraham considered righteous before God because Abraham trusted God and therefore because of the faith of Abraham, righteousness was imputed unto him. It's always, <laughs> get this, it's always been by grace. Yes. Through faith. Through faith. faith. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? I love the Lord, preacher. Do you? Yeah, I love the Lord. But then why don't we do what the... Oh, that may be another message for another day. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole world. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Mm, I have confidence in you. I love that. I love that. How many of us want to praise the Lord this morning that has confidence in us? I love 
Folks, I just absolutely love to teach the Bible. And I just absolutely love to preach the messages that the Holy Spirit lays on my heart. And I love to preach messages that one challenges. If you are hearing this message today, whether you're here in the church or you're watching over the internet, if you are hearing this message today and you're still yet lost in your sins, I want to challenge you today to consider Jesus Christ and everything that I have laid before you through the Word of God. I want you to consider that all the way back in the beginning of time when, man, when God created man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul, that sin entered into the world. And because of this sin, there was a separation between man and God. And all the way through biblical history, things were attempted to restore that relationship back to a righteous standing between God and man. But all along, nothing was able to restore that relationship. So Christ left His home in glory and came here and fulfilled the whole law of God. You can't fulfill the law of God. You can't fulfill the law of God. I can't fulfill the law of God. So Christ did for us what we were not able to do for ourselves. And fulfilled the law of God and then said, and I'm going to paraphrase here, I'm going to go to court on your behalf. You are guilty, but I'm You might say, why would anybody do something like that for me? No greater love had a man than this. Amen. That he would lay down his life for his friends. And then charges us, you are my friends if you do what I say. If you follow my commandments. If you trust in my grace. If you receive my gift of love. For God so loved the world. Ha! That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever drugged at church by his ear because it was Sunday morning. I went kicking and screaming and holding and fussing and biting and everything else. And I gotta tell you, I probably got most of the spankings in my life on Sunday morning because it was time to go to church and I, I, I thought it was time to go fishing. You're coming to church with me. I gotta tell you, I am one of those people who have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ my whole life long. I know that God is real. I know that Jesus is God's son. I know that he bled and died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I know he was buried on the third day resurrected to give me hope of eternal life to come. I grew up with that. That was pounded into me. I didn't doubt it. I knew it. But I had not accepted it. Amen. When I finally did accept it, it changed who I was. Yes. Yes. The addictions that were in my life, I was set free from it. The anger that was in my life, I was set free from it. The pride that was in my life, I was set free from it. And the Bible says that the Son shall make you free. You are free indeed. I stand before you today. I know what it is to be set free from sin because I was so lost in it. So lost. So hard, so bitter, so much without hope, had no peace, had no joy, but one prayer of faith as of a grain of mustard seed. And the Holy Spirit touched me and blessed me and filled me with joy and filled me with peace and changed me and made me who He created me to be. I am not here. Praise His holy name. If you're hearing me today and you're still lost in your sins, I challenge you. I challenge you to trust that the gospel of Jesus Christ is true. And that if he saved me, 
My goodness, he can save anybody. Sometimes I got to be careful with my testimony. But I got to tell you, the first time, the first time that I ever got my hands put behind my back and shoved in the back of a police car, I was in the seventh grade. That's terrible, isn't it? I didn't care. I, I didn't care. If you crossed me, we were going to have at it. And I had a terrible, terrible time growing up. I got to the point where I had to look over my shoulder every place I went. One, because I probably made somebody in that town mad. And two, I didn't know when the next police officer was going to pull up and get a hold of me. I know what it is to say. But praise His holy name by the blood of Jesus Christ. I was forgiven. I was set free. And I was made a new person. I challenge you today. I challenge you if you're still yet lost in your sin. Maybe you know the gospel. Maybe you've heard the gospel. But you've never reached a point in your life where you've received the gospel. You, I challenge you today. Preacher, I need a change in my life. Preacher, I'm not happy with the way things have gone over the last few years. Preacher, I want happiness. Preacher, I want a peaceful home. Preacher, I, uh, I can't give it to you. If I could reach in my pocket and give it to you as a gift, I would. I cannot. But what I can do is open up the Holy Word of God and deliver the truth to you and let you make your own decision and challenge you. Receive of God what Christ has to offer. If you're hearing this message today and you have answered the call to salvation, I want to challenge you today to stand fast in the grace and the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Stand fast in it. Stand in it. It's freedom, it's grace, it's power, it's leadership, it's guidance, it's wisdom. It's the ability to do what you know you need to do rather than what the world is trying to tell you it is. Ah, oh, listen, friend, we, we watch way too much news. We, we read way too many newspapers. But what we really need to be doing is reading the promises and the power that's found in God's Word. All preacher are all the world in trouble. Yes, it is. I agree with you 110%. And we need to put it on the prayer list and pray for it every time. But hey, Jesus said, I'll build my church upon this rock and the gate.
you know that yes, Jesus is able to say, yes, Jesus is able to heal. Yes, Jesus is able to grant us wisdom. Yes, if I follow the Holy Spirit, I'll make better decisions with my money. Jesus. To have Jesus. 
if you're not guilty, then cast a stone at her. Oh, can you imagine the joy she must have felt? Can you imagine the freedom she must have felt? Especially when Jesus made eye contact with her and said, Woman, where are those then accusers? Just moments ago, there was a crowd of people. Just moments ago, they were standing there pointing their fingers. Just moments ago, they said she's guilty and I can prove it. Just moments ago, she was taking her last breath. And her eyes fall upon Christ as Christ's eyes lift up to her. And he says, where are those that accused you? Does any man condemn, condemn you? She says, no man. She looks around. She's been set free. He said, I don't condemn you either. Now just go and sin no more. That's what forgiveness does, friend. Not only does it forgive us from the act of the sin that we have committed, but it frees us from the bondage or the power that sin has on us. And it frees us from the guilt. I believe that there are multitudes of people today that need to know you don't know free from guilt. I'm so thankful to be free from the guilt. He has freed us from the bondage of sin. He's freed us from the guilt of sin. And this points. He's also, he's also freed us from the pain of our past. How many of you know you have a past? Hey, we ain't got a little pie there. You ain't all that pious. Hey, man. You ain't all that, hey, ain't all that righteous. We all got a past. Every one of us. Not me, preacher. I've just done it. Yeah, right. That might be what you're saying, but, but I know different. We've all got a past. We've all got a present. And praise God, through Jesus Christ, we've all got a future. Ain't none of us, ain't none of us can stand before God and say, I don't have a, I don't have a past. We all have a past. Sometimes that past is very painful. Not only based upon what we've done, but how about this? Based upon what other people have done to you. Do you know how many people are just torn upside down and inside out today because they never knew what it was like to be loved? Do you know how many people who are, who are suffering from depression and anxiety because of something that happened in their past? Listen, our God was from the beginning and He will be there. There is no ending with Him. Amen. Amen. And listen to me this morning. As I read the Scripture, I read about a woman named Ray. Jesus gave Peter a heads up. 
Peter said, Far be it from me, my Lord, I'll never deny you. I'll never forsake you. Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows three times, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. Not so, Lord. He got a heads up. But Peter found himself denying that he even knew who Jesus was. And on the third time, he heard the rooster. Me and my little granddaughter, uh, Ariana, every time she sees me, I don't know why. It's kind of a cute, funny little thing that every every time she sees you know, I walk into their house, she'll say, Grandpa, cock a doo doo. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she thinks I look like a rooster or something. I don't know. That's just kind of something funny between me and her. We cock a doo doo at each other. But for that rooster said cock a doo doo, Peter had denied him three times. Peter had passed. Amen. We've all got a past. Yes, amen. We've all done things wrong. We've all got things we wish we could go back and undo or redo. Yes. Me included. And sometimes those things can add a certain amount of pain in our lives. Do you know how many people have said I've done what I did because dad didn't play ball with me in the backyard? Do you know how many people said I am how I am because mommy didn't love me much? Do you know how many people are using their past as a crutch? Yes. Amen. Yes. Ugh. You are delivered Amen. from that past. Amen. You are set free from that pain of a bad past. You are no longer that person and there Stand! 
Preacher, you don't understand. People just keep coming at me. I try to get away from it, but they won't leave me alone. I try to do my thing and follow what's right. But people just keep on coming and coming and coming. And I can't get away. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Amen. But it's hard. How do I do that? You just got to your trust in God. He set you free from it. You're no longer that anymore. And you've got the choice to either fall back into that bondage again or stand fast in the grace that has set you free. Amen. And I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy. It's going to be one of the hardest things you've ever done. Because you're still in this body. You may be filled with the Spirit, but you're wrapped in flesh. And that flesh is going to cause you to want it. Oh, I know. I know. I've had to pray about it more than a few times. Have you ever thought, man, if I could just throw this guy in the head and knock a couple of the teeth out, he'd get the message? Preacher, you shouldn't say that kind of stuff. Hey, above all else, we need to be honest. Amen. And in that moment where you're thinking about that headlock, you've got a choice to make. Fall back into this bondage where I can stand fast in the grace and say I'm set free. I choose to be set free. Oh, yeah, but you don't understand, man. You can't let people... Hey, hey, being still and doing nothing is two totally different things. Standing still in the grace of God is doing something. Amen. It's laying the power of heaven at work in your home and in your heart and in your life. He's got the power to keep you. And the world challenges us so often times but listen, friend, the world might challenge you, but the Word has challenged you to stand fast in this freedom. You have the freedom. You have the power to choose for yourself to stay free or to fall off in the bondage. Praise His holy name. I love what Joshua had to say. You know, Israel had fallen apart. They were serving other gods. Yeah. Amen. They were... They, Things had gotten bad. They had rejected God. They had rejected God's leadership. They had rejected God's guidance. They were serving other gods. They were serving themselves. They were making a mockery out of the relationship between Israel and God. The whole nation had turned their back on God. And Joshua stood before them and said, Do you remember when you were in bondage to Egypt? It was by the power of God that you were delivered. Do you remember when you reached Jericho and there was a great wall around the city and God gave you a plan of action and you followed the plan of action and the wall of Jericho fell flat? Do you remember that? Do you remember how he has delivered you from the amount
This world doesn't dictate who you are. Your past doesn't dictate who you are. Today, you're in Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus is in you. And you can choose to do the right thing. Do you realize how much drama in our lives would be done with? If we just said, I don't care. <laughs> hey, check something out. Check something out. God sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house to receive a message from God. And the Bible says, so Jeremiah went to the potter's house. I preached a whole message one time on the word so. Do you remember that? I preached a whole message one time on one word. The Holy Spirit gave me one word, and the word was so, S-O, not S-E-W, but S-O. Do you, do you realize how much power and authority you have in your life, if so be you being Christ, and Christ is in you? And do you realize how much drama would just be absolutely done in your life? If every time the drama came your way, you just said so. No, oh, everybody else, that's going to drive everybody else crazy. What do you mean so? What do you mean so? I'm trying to tell you that I'm so, 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 so. Just battle it with the word so. I learned a long time ago. It takes two people to fight. <laughs> I can throw punches in the air and absolutely not engage in battle with nobody. But if somebody stands in front of me and we start throwing punches, then we've engaged in a battle. What does it matter to you? Are you a child of God? Have you been saved by grace? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? The world hated Christ. What does it matter to you what the world thinks? Why should it matter what the world has to say? You say, preacher, I want my home to have more peace in it. Learn to say so what? <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I know that's simple, but it's the truth. Learn to say so. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not that little kid that I used to be anymore getting caught up in all this high school type drama. My goodness, Paul said when I was a child, I like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yeah. It's time to put away that childish stuff. And if you have to stand fast in the grace that has set you free and simply say, so, you're going to say, well, they're going to think I'm crazy. They think you're crazy anyway. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to help you here. I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to show you something in the Word that's going to bless your life. You can either take it or you can leave it. But that's what I'm feeding up for breakfast this morning. He has the power to keep you. You have freedom and power to choose for yourself. Because you have the power of choice. I like messages that caution us. You can see this. I know it's getting late. I'm going to wrap this up. You can see this in verses 2 through 4. Behold, I Paul say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are who are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. I like messages that give us a caution, and here's the caution. Here's the caution found in that. Don't mix law with grace. Jesus himself taught that you can't put new wine into old bottles lest the old bottles burst and the wine is wasted. He said that new wine must be put into new bottles. And too many people receive the grace of God and get set free and then try to live according to the bondage of the law. You're going to have trouble on your hands every time. Every time. Every time. There's too many people. There's too many denominations. There's too many whole lifestyles that are just, that are just so focused on their rules and their rituals and their traditions of men to keep them saved. Let me tell you something. If the rules and the rituals and the traditions could not save your soul if it took grace to save you, then why in the world wouldn't you just be willing to stand in that grace? To stand in that power. Amen. 
Stay away from legalism, folks. We are not saved by works. What we do or what we don't do, we are not saved by rituals or traditions. We are saved by the grace of God through faith in the blood and in the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we trust in anything else to save us, then Christ has no effect. Okay. And in this, I like messages that comfort us. Verse number five is a good example of that. There is great comfort. Listen to me. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. There's great comfort to all that are saved by grace and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 5 says, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. He offers us guidance. He directs our steps. But hear me today. We must learn how to follow that guidance in our lives. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. In order for us to be used of Him as leaders, we must first learn how to follow. And nobody, that's a hard thing for people today. That's a hard thing for people because it means humbling yourself. It means being able to say, you know, I got that wrong. And I need guidance in my life. We all want to say, I'm my own man, I'm my own woman, I'll make my own choices, I'll do my own thing. Well, once again, you have the freedom and the power of choice. You can do that. But when your life falls apart, you ain't got nobody to blame for it but yourself. Amen? We all need something solid in our lives. And the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, gives us that something solid to build our lives upon. And lastly, I like messages that have conditions to be met because it gives us a goal to reach. Verse number six, for in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. There's the condition, friend. There's the condition. Faith. Faith by love of God which is in Jesus Christ. That's the condition. My question to you today is will you will you meet that condition? Will you? I'm, I'm going to make this personal right now. I'm making it personal. I'm setting it in your lap. Hold it in your hands and look at it. And I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? With this message, what will you do with it? Will you continue to trust in grace? Will you stand fast in the freedom wherewith Christ has made you free? Will you let your relationship with God continue to grow in faith and in love? Or do you feel the need to turn again to the bondage that only the grace of God can set you free from? What will you do with it? What will you do with today's message? The choice is yours, friend. But I want to urge you. I want to urge you. Stand fast. <laughs> stand fast. In the liberty <laughs> wherewith Christ has made you free. I feel like I preached my message. Give me a song that's right for our people. I wonder this morning, is there one or more of you that are here today you have never reached that point in your life where you surrendered your all to Jesus Christ. Maybe your life's been hard. Maybe, maybe there's some hurt. Maybe there's some things in your past that are kind of dictating your present. You're hoping it doesn't dictate your future. You've been, you, you have the ability to be set free. Maybe you're here today in the guilt of sin. Past mistakes, things you've done, things you've said you wish you never would have. And it's haunted you. It's haunted you, really. And you're just tired of feeling guilty about it. And you wish the whole world would forget about it. And you could just go on and do what you're going to do. Listen, the world ain't ever going to let you forget about it. Even in Christ, the world's going to hold things against you. But here's the thing. You 
confess your sins, you repent of your sins, you ask Christ into your heart to give him to save you, the Bible promises that he'll cast that as far as these days from the West. Never to be brought up against you again. You can stand free in God. Free from guilt, free from shame, free from sin, free from the power of sin. You can also stand free in power to live a life that's going to produce joy, peace, patience in your life. Are you here today? Every head's bowed, every eyes closed. No one can see you. Are you here today? And would you say, creature, that's me. I want that. I've never accepted it. I don't have it, but I want it now. I'm not going to embarrass you and pull you in front of the church and why don't everybody come around like, hey, no, no, no. That's between you and the Lord. I just want to lead you in prayer. You can pray right where you're at if you want. Would you just surrender to the Lord this morning? Raise a hand. Make eye contact with me. Do something. Let me know. I want you to lead me in prayer, Pastor. I need I need salvation. I want it. Is there one more? Okay. Maybe you're here today and you are in Christ. Amen. But there's been something said to you this morning in the Word that has encouraged you, that has revived you. Amen. That has set you free. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that. I see that. I see the tears. I see the hands. Praise His holy name. Father, I come before you this morning and I thank you, Lord, for this little church where there is liberty to just stand fast in the Word and preach it the way that you would lead, lead me through it. And I thank you, Lord, that there are those that are here that open their heart up to receive the truth of your Word. So many hands have just raised, and nearly every hand has raised in the church house this morning. Lord, I don't know what it is they're seeking. I don't know what it is they're praying for. And I really don't know how this message has affected their lives. I only know that they've said, remember me, Pastor. So I stand in the gap on their behalf. And I just pray the Holy Spirit that you would, that you would cultivate in their hearts and in their minds the things that you have had them to receive today. Father, I love this church. I love these people, each and every one. And I know that you do too. So I'm going to ask you once again, Lord, please keep them all safe from harm's way and bring us back at our next appointed time where we can worship you once again in spirit and in truth. All honor, glory, worship, and praise we give unto thee. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.